dare to do that? White Paul's snotty over there. service concludes, we will be passing this toilet paper pile that you've all so generously brought for the food pantry. And what we want to do is Pastor Lurie will lead the, the human chain down the, um, the outside driveway around to the food pantry door. And we would like everybody, and, and why doesn't Randy Matthews go with her since she's the in charge of the food pantry. And then we'd like everybody to line up right behind them all the way back up here to the toilet paper pile and then we will pass the paper from one person to the next all the way down the chain till we get it all in the food pantry so that the volunteers can distribute it tomorrow and in the upcoming weeks to the families who come. Thank you for making that part of your service project today. That's always kind of a fun thing. Everybody's invited to be at choir on Thursday night. Lynn Agem says you don't even need to sing. You don't even need to be able to read music. She will teach you and make you a phenomenal musician. Um, look what she's done with Linda Osterhaus over the years. <laughs> so everybody should be um, interested in coming to choir on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. It's in the sanctuary. It's a wonderful opportunity to lead worship. And at the same time, we have good fellowship and a lot of fun. Um, a couple of other things. Communion this morning will be by intention. Receive the wafer, dip it into the wine or to the, into the juice. There will be two stations of servers up here. Just move to whatever station you're comfortable with and uh, receive the holy meal. We believe that Jesus Christ is truly present in those elements, and we invite all believers this morning, regardless of your denomination, to share in that meal. Um, Months ago, our Sunday school superintendent, Christine Stam, came to me and she said, I think our theme for Rally Sunday should be at your service. And of course, I agreed with Christine because I always agree with Christine. <laughs> right, Tracy? If you know what's best for you, you simply say, yes, Christine, that's a good idea. So then it got a little closer to this weekend and I started thinking about what we were going to talk about, service. And I started to think about how, how service is used in our society. We have things like service stations where we take our cars and there's the president's selective service. And some people on this, on this lawn have served in military service. And master service comes and cleans your carpet. And new, di new parents sometimes use a diaper service. And you might have charter for your cable service. Or sometimes when we're struggling financially, we may go over there to social service. 
Some people right here belong to service clubs like the Optimists or the Rotarians. And this morning, right here on the lawn, we're all attending and participating in a worship service. So the thing that I found that's sort of common with all of those things, with all of that service, is that service is always about doing something for others. Now, sometimes it's about doing something for others because of money or compensation. Like housekeepers in hotels provide a really valuable service, and they're paid for it, oftentimes not enough, but it's service with compensation. In other cases, there is no compensation. But in either of those cases, the person doing the service is a servant. A servant. A servant is someone who is devoted to another person or to another cause. My auto mechanic, and I love him. He is the best. If you're looking for an auto mechanic, you can rely on come and talk to me. I'll send you to Randy. I don't trust a lot of auto mechanics, but I trust that Randy, who is my servant, will do everything he can to make my cars run well and give me the best price possible. And as Christians, we often refer to ourselves as servants. Martin Luther even said once, listen to this, because this is hard. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all. That's a big label for us, folks. That means that you're all my servants. Would somebody go get me a glass of water? Mm -mm. Hey, I'm serious here. <laughs> That's what I figured. Well, anyway, when Martin Luther said this, he wasn't referring to the service that we do as something for compensation or for our own personal gain. As Christians, we hope that our service is motivated by our hearts, by hearts that believe in justice and mercy and equality for all people. We hope that our service is motivated by the gospel of God's gracious love and forgiveness, that our service is motivated by a man named Jesus who was the ultimate servant of all of us and who dedicated his life even through his death to the work of God's love for each and every one of us. Servants of this Lord, the one up there that we remember through that cross that you just looked at, servants of that Lord are not motivated by money or power or, or recognition or prestige or other forms of compensation. And these servants come in all kinds of shapes and forms, as you can tell as you look around the grass this morning. Some are young, some are old, some are rich, some are poor, some are living very comfortably, and some are living in great distress. One of the mysteries of life that I've come to realize is that those who seem to have the greatest ability to encourage and to help distraught people are those who are struggling themselves. Those who have the greatest ability to help distraught people are people who are struggling themselves. If you've ever gone on a trip to Biloxi or New Orleans with us, you know exactly what those words mean. So this weekend, sitting out here in this absolutely glorious day, blue sky, not a cloud anywhere, green grass sort of drying out, not too bad, green trees, a little color, a little color coming in over there on some of the hard maples. What a phenomenal gift we have today in creation. It's a great place out here in nature to remember the gift we've received from our ultimate servant. And as we sit here and remember that gift, as we begin this new program year here at Lakeview, it's also a good weekend for us to consider personally the kinds of ways that we will serve this congregation and our Lord in the upcoming program year. Most of you will gather together every weekend and serve as we worship together on Sunday mornings and on Saturday nights. 
And some of you will serve by reading and ushering and assisting with communion or running the computer or making coffee or teaching Sunday school or shoveling snow or rolling lefts or preparing food for funerals or chaperoning youth trips or spreading mulch in the yard or walking in the crop walk or building for Habitat for Humanity or staying overnight with Road Home or being on the church council or putting together a new pictorial directory, yes, finally one's coming, or fixing broken hinges around the building or folding bulletins or passing out food from the food pantry, or cleaning kitchen cupboards, or singing in the choir, or cooking lutefisk, heaven forbid, or pricing junk for the rummage sale, or washing coffee mugs on a Sunday morning. In a few minutes, you can't even leave this grass without becoming a servant, because we're all going to form a line and pass all the toilet paper down to the food pantry, because we are servants doing service. And you know what? In all of these things, and in so many more things that you will serve in in this year, you are not going to receive any money. In fact, most of you are never even going to hear a thank you for the work that you do. And in many cases, no one is even going to know that it was you who did the service. A little crazy we are. I think we are. But I want you to know this. Somewhere, at some time, you aren't going to be able to predict, but at somewhere, sometime, the service that you silently provide this year is going to quietly touch the heart of someone that you probably don't even know. Without realizing it, your service will provide the good news of God's love to another person in this phenomenal creation, and you won't even know that it's happening. Without any hoopla or any fanfare, your service this year will allow someone to know that the ultimate servant that you already know is also their servant. So we model Christ. We look at that cross as the kids just did, and we remember our servant. And because of that servant, we can boldly proclaim that we are at your service. Amen. And I'd invite you to sing the hymn printed, Make Me a Servant. scripture about being a servant, but my favorite is from the Old Testament in the book of Joshua, when Joshua says, choose this day whom you will serve, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the whole church, that it continue to walk in your presence, holding high the cross and transforming lives by serving all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For a renewed awareness of the value you placed on creation in the beginning, that we may practice good stewardship of the land, air, water, and the natural resources. We pray for servant hearts that place peace and justice above power, wealth, and personal gain. Lord, in your mercy. For the safety and education of our children, that we may come to know your love through our Sunday school program, that our confirmation students may be inspired by your spirit to grow in their faith, give you our young, our youth and adults going to camp next weekend a safe journey. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who will serve in our Sunday school this year, that they may be filled with compassion and excitement. 
Give them the gifts of patience and creativity. Give them the words to teach about faith. Lord, in your mercy. For our musicians, that they may be moved to sing with your, sing of your love and serve you with song. Bless their gatherings to be times of worship and fellowship. Lord, in your mercy. For the ongoing outreach ministries of this congregation, that each of us may desire to serve and that our congregation may be able to share the dollars necessary for that service. Lord, in your mercy. For all who struggle with grief, illness, hospitalization, or the end of life, that they may find peace and hope. Be with Bill Miller, David Krause, Rick Zogbaum, Joan Lofgren, Eloda Everson, Joan Puzak, Marty, and, and Dick Scheel, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please allow me to close with prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks for the gift of this holy meal, the presence of your Son, our Savior. We pray that you will send us forth from this place to model the Christ and to do service through our words and through our actions every day of our lives in the world. Challenge us with new opportunities. Bless us when we succeed. We ask this all in the name of the Christ. Amen. Two quick things. First of all, Terry Amorke is videotaping this service, and the reason he's doing that is on our Facebook page, if you have not joined, you're invited to join Lakeview Lutheran Church Facebook page. There is a link that you'll be able to watch the service um, on that page. So you can go there, click the link. Hopefully everything will work out. Terry's going home to try that today. We thank him, and so that means in the future we can put a variety of our activities on our Facebook page, and you can go home and see how you looked at church if you want to change something. It's too late now for this one, um, so if you don't like your hair, it's over. Um, lunch is going to be served in a little bit, but what we would love for you to do right now is, Pastor Lori, will you lead a crew right out here and down the sidewalk and just follow her, and we're going to pass the toilet paper. If you're in a wheelchair and you want to help out, why don't you come right up here? I'm looking at these two and anybody else, and we'll begin passing. So we're going to form a human line, and then we're going to be ready.